So we're beginning conic sections um, for our honors pre-calc class, and I wanted to make a video talking through the notes um, in case somebody's absent, and actually one day I will be absent. So um, here we go. The the beginning here, the a circle, I, I do expect that you've seen circles. I do expect that you already know a bit of this. So we're going to go kind of quickly. Um, it's a set of all points in a plane that are equal distant from a fixed point. Um, and so what we're most familiar with is that it's um, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where the center is the point hk and the radius is r. Um, there, what happens, they're both, um, the, uh, both x and y end up getting squared, um, and the leading coefficients are the same, um, because if the leading coefficients aren't the same, it'll be an ellipse instead of a circle. So they took this equation and then solved for y so that you could put it into y equals. Um, we don't do that very often, but there it is. Um, so when we graph, it says start at the center and count the radius, um, north, south, east, west. Okay, so here, let's, let's jump in and do it. So the first one, graph and write the equation of the circle with radius 3 and center at negative 1, 5. Ooh, that's really small. Negative 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pretend I can count that. It's tiny. And then I have a radius of 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So I'm just going 3, 1, I don't, for whatever reason I'm going this direction. 1, 2, 3. And then here's our lovely circle. Well, okay, whatever. Um, and then the equation becomes x plus 1 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to 9. Uh, if I give you a question on, like this on the test, you need to say thank you, because that's really easy. Um, on this one, what we have here, this is x squared over 9 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. This isn't quite in that form where we have, excuse me, where it's equal to r squared. But if I multiply everybody by 9, I get x squared plus y squared equals 9. And then my center is just this, the origin, and then my radius is 3. So we're sitting here, and then we go one, two, three, one, two, three. Anyway, it's not really worth my time, but okay, pretend. Okay, so once again, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next one, write the equation of a circle with center negative four, six, and that is tangent to the y-axis. Okay, so this one might be helpful to kind of look and see what we're talking about. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so here's the center, and it says it's tangent to the y-axis. That means it's going to touch, it's going to include this point on the y-axis, and then do something like that. Um, this was the point negative four, six. So we are four units away from the y-axis. So we have a radius there of four. So this just becomes x plus four squared. y minus six squared is equal to 16. The next one, write the equation of a circle with a center containing that point. OK, so um, if I think of this, we've got seven. So we've gone with seven and then up five. That's the point. That's the center, 7, 5, and then it contains 3, negative 2, something like that. Okay, so 3, negative 2 is going to be one of the points on the circle, so it's going to do something like this. This length right here is the radius. So there's two ways to think through this. Option one is um, to, to use the distance formula. So um, distance would be equal to the square root of well, our, we subtract our x's, 7 minus 3 squared, plus we subtract our y's, um, 5 minus a negative 2 squared. Um, so this is what the square root of uh, 4 squared is 16, 7 squared is 49. Okay, so then the radius here ends up being the square root of 65. Um, and then on our equation, we end up just using 65. Um, so in option one, we'd get x minus 7 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 65. Option two, we can come through here and say um, option two. We can take our equation x minus 7 squared plus um, y minus 5 squared, and that's equal to r squared. And we can plug in a point. Um, on, on the circle. So we can say, okay, well, 3 minus 7 squared plus 
negative 2 minus 5 squared equals r squared. This is negative 4 squared is 16. This is negative 7 squared is 49. That's equal to r squared. This is still 65. And so then you now know that r squared, which we need to put back here, is equal to 65. Um, so x minus 7 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 65 is still the equation of that circle. I don't have a strong opinion as to which way you do it, but you just have to get to the right answer. Okay, the next one, number 5, tells us to write the equation of the line that is tangent to the circle at that point. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a, a circle um, centered at the origin that's got a, um, a radius of 5. So it's doing something like this, and it's got a radius of 5. Well, then the point 3, 4, this would be 5. So what we're looking at here, we want to know what's the equation of that tangent line that's going something like this. Okay, that's what they're talking about in that problem. May not be drawn to scale, but I don't really care. Okay, so we're going to go through the point 3, 4, and then we need to know the slope of this because the tangent line is going to have, a, the, its slope is going to be the negative reciprocal. Well, slope is rise over run, so the slope of the, the radius has a radius, has a slope, radius slope would be um, four thirds. Therefore, the, the tangent slope is going to be a negative three fourths. And it needs to go through that point, so we can y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're back in algebra 1, um, so I'm going to plug in y minus 4 equals negative 3 fourths times x minus 3. Oh, I don't really feel like multiplying that. Um, anyway, another option, sometimes I like to do it this way, is I'll say um, the slope negative 3 fourths is equal to y, the change in y, so y minus 4 over the change in x, x minus 3, and then when I can just cross multiply, and I have 4y minus 16 equals negative 3x plus 9, and now I can get to standard form, um, 3x plus 4y equals, add that, 25. That's one way to get to the standard form, or I can solve for y, um, add that, that's 25, so then I can say y equals negative three-fourths, where am I? Um, negative three-fourths x, okay, that would be a plus 25, but so it's 25 over 4. Uh, you can get, I could, I could distribute this through and then have to add fractions, I was just too lazy. So um, if I want a particular version, if I want standard form or if I want slope intercept, I'll, I'll tell you, I, at this point, I don't, that's not really what I'm concerned about. So I would accept either of those answers. Um, okay, so then the next one, they, they give it to you where they have, they've taken x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, and they've foiled everything out, and they've kind of given it to you in, in, this, um, in this form. Different books call different things, different names. So I would consider this the, yeah, do I call it standard form? I don't know what our book says. I'd have to go look again. Um, but basically, we need to take this and get it back to here. So we're going to complete the square. So I'm going to group my x's. And they need, I always like plus a box. I'm going to group my y's. And I'm going to I'm going to add a box, but I, it doesn't have to be the same value as this. So I'm going to use a different shape. Um, and then this is equal to, I'm going to move that to the other side, is equal to 12. Well, and I'm adding a box, and I'm adding a triangle. Okay? So then this, I complete the square. Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared gives me a 9 in my box, which gives me a 9 over here. Um, and then this one, y minus two, half of negative 4 is negative 2. 2 squared gives me a 4 in the triangle. That's 16 plus 9 is 25. Okay, complete this square to put in standard form. We've done that. The center, we'll probably ask for more. The center is negative 3, positive 2, and the radius is 5. Okay, and one more example than a homework assignment. Make sure you practice. Um, so same idea. We're going to put this in standard form. This one, it has an inequality, so we'd have some shading. Um, x squared minus 10x plus a box. That's box for 10. Uh, plus y squared plus 4y plus a triangle uh, is greater than negative 13 
plus a box. That's my boxes look lovely. Plus a triangle. Okay, so then I have x minus 5 squared, so in the box goes 25. That says 25. This becomes y plus 2 squared, and the triangle is a 4. Uh, that's 29 minus 13 is 16, so this has to be greater than 16. Okay, so I've got, we're, we should graph this because the only, the only reason we care, what makes it different is that inequality. Um, the center was at 5, negative 2. The radius is 4. Okay, so if I've got, oh, here's some space. I've got a center at 5, negative 2, and a radius of 4. So if I go um, that many units here, I'm at, um, this is 5, negative 2. This is the point. If I subtract 4, I'm at 1, negative 2. I add 4, I'm at 9, negative 2. And then coming up, I'm at positive 2. So this is 5, positive 2, going down. Pretend I... I'm not overly really worried about my scale. Um, going down for more, that's 5, negative 6. And so this one, it's it's a just a greater than sign. So I'm going to do a dotted because it does not include those values. And then I sometimes forget. Do I want to shade inside? Do I want to shade outside? So what I do is I always take the origin. Um, in this case, um, the or uh, let's see, if I plug in, 0 minus 5 squared plus 0 plus 2 squared. I want to see whether that's, how does that relate to 16? If it's true, this is 25 plus 4. Is this a true statement? 29 is greater than 16? Yes, it is. So I want the origin shaded. So it's going to be everything outside. And there we go. Have fun.